On this episode of What's Going On With Shipping, the UN buys a boat. I'm your host, Sal McCagliano. So the UN is buying a boat, and this is not for booze cruises up and down the East River so that they can bring uh, diplomats back to Kips Bay and the UN headquarters. No, instead, the UN is buying a tanker, and not just a tanker, a very large crude carrier. Yes, one of the largest type of vessels in the world. And I should also mention, they're buying it at the time when the price for VLCCs, very large crude carriers, is at the absolute paramount it has been in years. Yes, that's right. Not, as, not only is the UN buying a boat, but they're buying a boat at the exact wrong time to buy a boat. But the reason they're buying it is an important one, and that's what I want to talk about today. If you're new to the channel, hey, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. All right, let's look into this story. So I got a couple of these stories, and I'll have them posted in the show notes down below. This is the one from Reuters over on G-Captain. UN secures Euronav tanker to offload oil from decaying FSO safer in Red Sea. All right, let's break that down there for a little bit. So Euronav is a large tanking uh, tanker firm, one of the biggest. And the UN is securing to buy from them a super tanker to offload the FSO safer. Now, the FSO safer has been an issue for quite a long time. So the SOFR, or SAFER, I apologize, it's, it's pronounced SOFR, is an FSO. This is a floating storage uh, offshore unit. Basically, instead of having to do a huge infrastructure with ports and piers and, and, and cranes and, and tugs and all the intricacies you need, you just lay an underwater pipeline out to a vessel that is moored, permanently moored. It's usually set in place with several anchors hooked into a pipeline that comes from shore and now you have it and that's what this from the UN talks about moored off Yemen's Red Sea coast the FSO Safar is a super tanker in advanced state of decay that will soon break apart or explode if the world does not act I'm not sure why they keep talking about exploding it's probably not going to explode it's probably break apart and have a huge oil spill if anything and again that's the problem with this design while this sounds great hey it's cheap it's quick it's easy you can get an old tanker and do this the problem is at the end you're stuck with an old tanker that is decaying. The UN is closer than ever to preventing the catastrophic spill. Donors, private companies, and members of the public have so far contributed $95 million toward the two-phase UN plan to prevent the spill. And that brings us back to the stories here. So let's take a look at each of these stories because each of them have a little bit of nugget of information that is really interesting for me to look at. So right here, uh, they have purchased this tanker to store about 1.1 million barrels of oil that will be transferred from the SOFR to avert the environmental damage. Uh, UN officials have been warning for several years about this, and this has been an ongoing thing, man. This has just been out there for a long time. The UN said the cleanup could cost $20 billion. So obviously this is going to be cheaper than uh, the, the alternative, yet is struggling to raise the $129 million needed to remove the oil from the software and pay for the vessel bought from Euronav. The vessel they bought from Euronav was for $55 million. Again, you could have gotten that vessel a year ago for like $10 or tw uh, $15 million. But anyway, so far pledges of $95 million have been made, mostly by governments, of which $75 million has been paid. Uh, going on here, looking at several other stories, this is from over at Splash 24-7, Sam Chambers. UN buys uh, Euronav VLCC as operations to move oil from decaying FSO get moving. Again, a good summary right here for it, and also a link over to the crowdfunding source. So if you want to contribute to this, you're more than welcome uh, to do it. Uh, the software has been a issue here off the coast of the Red Sea, not just for the decaying, but it's also been a hotspot. Uh, we have seen Houthi rebels in Yemen, for example, launch surface-to-surface -surface missiles at vessels. There's been a fear that this could basically uh, uh, cause uh, damage to the vessel. Potentially, that could cause the explosion in the fire. One of the things that's noted in here, a major spill would devastate fishing communities on Yemen's Red Sea coast, li likely wiping out 200,000 livelihoods instantly. So this has been a big issue. It's been, it's been an essential issue. Go over here to Maritime Executive. Their story, uh, very similar, but with a little bit more detail in here. 
that I want to drive into. The UN is coordinating with marine salvage company Smith on the plan while also working to hold together a fragile agreement among the warring parties to permit the international effort. Again, you can't have anybody shooting surface-to-surface missiles at you. The SAFER built in 1976 as the SO Japan was converted to an FSO in 1987 and remains uh, anchored approximately five and a half miles offshore in an area held by rebel forces. Operations were suspended in 2015 during the ongoing civil war with a skeleton crew aboard to provide essential maintenance, but the ship has deteriorated and has continues to deteriorate over the course of eight years. Smith had been working at the vessel for the past few months with the UN preparing for a ship-to-ship transfer. Uh, officials say they're anxious to get the new tanker alongside and expect it will arrive in Yemen by late April, early May. I am going to expect that the UN is going to request a naval escort for the vessel to provide some sort of security for it. Uh, the effort was slowed uh, b- slowed by the difficulties UN experienced in securing a replacement vessel as well as a prolonged fundraising effort. In January, they reported having difficulty securing a tanker and the prices for vessels have risen dramatically due to the war in Ukraine and changes in the global oil markets. Again, VLCCs are right now being used to haul oil out of the Gulf Coast of the United States across to Europe. That is something VLCCs have never been used for. But yet you're seeing that now. Why? Because Russian crude is cut off to the European Union and G7. Uh, Goes on here. UN officials uh, report that they have commitments from the global community as well as through online crowdfunding for a total of $95 million, of which $75 million has been received. They have long warned of the potential for a catastrophic disaster that could result in $20 billion cleanup. They have estimated the environmental impact on fishing and marine life could last 25 years. So this is a huge story that's going on. And again, it's great to see the UN taking action about this. I do have several questions. The vessel in question is heading into a dry dock to be surveyed and uh, put uh, ready for the transfer operation. I do have several questions. Number one, Who is going to operate this vessel? The UN does not have a shipping firm. So is Euronav going to operate this for them? Are they receiving a charter from uh, the United Nations? What flag does this ship fly? I I mean, you have to register it somewhere. Could it be registered under the IMO, the International Maritime Organization? This is the shipping agency of the UN that oversees all international shipping. Will they have to choose a national flag? Who do they use? (laughs) Because, good God, if you pick the wrong one here and you have a problem, this is going to be a huge liability issue. There's a lot of questions regarding this. And this comes at a time, too, by the way, when the UN is taking a lot of actions regarding shipping and ocean management. This story hit the other day, another Reuters story over on GCAPT, and this came out on March 5th. Nations secure UN Global High Seas Biodiversity Pact. Uh, This is a huge agreement. Negotiators from more than 100 countries completed a UN treaty to protect the high seas on Saturday, a long-awaited step that environmental groups say will help reverse marine biodiversity losses and sustainable development. The treaty is seen as a crucial component in the global efforts to bring 30% of the world's land and sea under protection by the end of the decade, the target known as 30 by 30 agreed in Montreal in December. Economic interests were a major sticking point throughout the last round of negotiations, which began on February 20th, with developing countries calling for a greater share of the spoils from the blue economy. Uh, It goes on here, the European Commission, the executive arm of the EU, hailed the agreement as a historic moment. With the agreement on the UN High Seas Treaty, we take a crucial step forward to preserve the marine life and biodiversity that are essential for us and our generations to come, said the European Commissioner. There, Greenpeace says 11 million square, uh, 11 million square kilometers, 4.2 million square miles of ocean needs to be put under protective uh, protection every year until 2030 to meet the target. Uh, the clock is ticking. So th- let's be clear about this. This is looking at areas outside the economic exclusion zones of countries. So this is not territorial waters. It's not economic waters. These are open areas, particularly areas out in the middle of the ocean off of Antarctica that need protection of some kind. They're basically the lawless sea in many areas. And I don't know how well this treaty is going to be received by every nation. Understand the United States which authored, well, I didn't author, but was one of the co-sponsors for the United Nations, uh, what's called UNCLOS, the UN Convention of the Law of the Sea, which came out in 1982, has been ratified by nearly every country on the planet except the U.S. 
uh, is the law by which most nations abide to. We honor unclause, but we're not a signatory to it, whereas China is a signatory to it and they don't always abide by it. Uh, this treaty will run into the same issues, I think, within the U.S. Senate. I don't think the U.S. Senate is going to be very happy with the idea of allocating sovereignty of the world's oceans to the U.N. It's just me. I just, uh, so I think that's going to happen. But I may be wrong. And again, this has to do with environment. This is not U.S. territorial waters. It's not even U.S. economic exclusion zone areas. These are open waters outside everybody's EEZs out around the planet, which is a good chunk of the world's oceans. And so you got two issues going on by the UN at the same time. You have the purchase of this VLCC, which again, I'm not sure how they operate this thing, what flag they do it, and what do they do with it when it's done. And now you have this treaty coming out of the UN, which again, delegates from all the major countries were there and agreed to. Now it's going to head to countries for ratification. So a lot of UN shipping news today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. Leave a comment, share it across social media, and if you can, support the page. How do you do that? Well, you can hit the super thanks button down below where you can give directly to the page or head on over to Patreon and become a patron of the page. You become a monthly or yearly subscriber. And if you want to own part of a uh, VLCC, well, then you can go over to crowdsourcing for the United Nations and help the United Nations buy themselves a boat because they just did. Again, I just uh, weirder things have happened in shipping news, but not today. That's that's the one that gets it today. All right. Until our next story, this is Sal signing off.